Good morning everybody. Hope everybody's doing well today. Here we go again. Another video. Another time for me to have a good moan because that's what us Brits are very good at. We're very good at moaning about the problems. Some of us are not very good at providing solutions, but that's another thing entirely. But as far as problems, what happens when freedom of speech dies? Democracy dies. Why do you think Keir the traitor Starmer is going after X and Elon Musk? It is to deny free speech, to deny people the ability to get news other than from his fake news outlets, or rather libelous, slanderous political activists who go out of their way to tar anybody who is concerned about the safety of their country and the safety of their kids as far right. These people are not far right. They are, as said, concerned citizens, concerned patriots, concerned parents, who merely care very passionately about their country. And I may not be a parent myself, I may not be a Christian myself, but you know what? I've always understood those values that people would have. And I suspect if I had a kid, which, honestly, I know there are a few people who said I might be a good father, but truth be told, I've not really been that confident on that. I feel like, I feel like I'd fly off the handle a little bit too much. I feel like I might not be a good influence for a kid. But that's just my humble opinion, which is, as always, subjective. And I guess what really it comes down to is... I would rather not put myself in the risk of raising a child at the risk and the fear of raising them wrong and creating a fucking monster versus the possibility of not having a kid and having nobody to continue the bloodline and what have you. It's a shame because Maya Tuzi's even been saying we need to go out and make lots of babies and what have you. And I do agree with this sentiment, we do. However. There are some cases where it's not always right for people to have kids. If you know you're not going to be able to support them, first and foremost, or if you feel like you're not going to be a good parent, then perhaps it's best to steer clear. But I am deviating a little bit, so let's get back onto the free speech topic. The way I look at this is we obviously have our mainstream media, like Sly News, BBC, Channel 4, the people who often go out of their way to basically label us and project, as is the legendary art of the far left. Back in the day, you could argue the toss about whether or not, oh, this window's a pain in the ass to close. Anyway, back in the day, you could argue the toss about there's a time and a place to argue about these things. You could argue the toss about whether or not you say things in certain places. As the years have gone on and on and on, I have noticed that this country is going down the shitter, put simply. And we are, I guess, losing the right to be able to stay silent on this kind of thing. Unfortunately, there are times now where we've got to speak the truth, regardless of where we are, within reason. Which is why I have been recording more stuff on the bus because I feel like at the end of the day there are going to be people who are going to be obviously NPCs who are going to be like there's a time and a place or they'll call me a knob or whatever but here's the way I slice it there are going to be people who are too scared to speak up who are too scared to say what they truly believe who are too scared to stand up against a traitorous establishment that would seek to destroy all of our civil liberties and our rights. There are people out there who need to feel like they have a voice. There are people who need to feel like they can be inspired by the ordinary person coming out of their way to make a video like this or to say the message as it is. Because another good quote is evil only wins when good men and women do nothing. 
That's what Keir the traitor Starmer is hoping on. He is hoping that good men and women will be too scared to talk up. They will be too scared to say the truth and say it how it is and challenge Keir the traitor Starmer. Because, let's face it, these people who are being sent to prison for being at these protests, some of them are justified because they're committing violence. Some of these are justified because they've broken the law to a significant extent. And I'm not talking about mean words on the internet. I'm talking like they've actually broken laws that people should follow by principle, i.e. no looting, no attacking the police, no vandalizing police stations or police vans and what have you. But let me be clear, I completely understand why these people have done it. I completely understand. I'd be pissed if I had a kid and somebody was basically running the country and saying, nah, I don't give a shit about the kids. I care more about Islam. I'd be livid. So I can completely understand. But there are a lot of people who have gone to these protests, whether it's Southport, whether it's Stoke-on-Trent, whether it's Plymouth, whether it's Portsmouth, whether it's Birmingham, whether it's Liverpool, and they are getting arrested for just being there. Some of the police have even been heard saying, just grab people. And police wonder why the British public are hostile to them. Yvette Cooper wonders why we're so hostile to the police. And, as a matter of fact, are hostile towards this traitorous establishment. It is simply because nobody listens to us, number one. Number two, we have two-tier policing and two-tier judiciary that clearly makes it okay for a child rapist to be spared jail time because the prisons are full but when it comes down to the far right the people who were out on these protests who were just trying to say what are you going to do to protect the kids oh then they've got plenty of room how do you explain that how do you explain that logic hmm? oh but of course the mainstream media won't tell you this you know the drill, folks, because say it with me, it doesn't suit the narrative. Do you really think they want to let the British public know about this? Of course they don't. If the British public found out that they're more interested in jailing protesters and political distance versus people who go out and violate children, I think they'd lose their shit, quite rightly. I think all hell would break loose. We would literally have hell and high water trying to calm the British public down for the simple fact it would become blatantly apparent why their children are persecuted. It's because our establishment doesn't protect them. Our establishment is more interested in silencing the views of his opponents than actually dealing with the problems at hand. Which, as I've said before, and I will reiterate here again, that makes Keir the traitor Starmer unequivocally and undoubtedly a fascist. He's more interested in making it so he has his dictatorship, I mean dictatorship, or maybe I was right first time, where he gets to control everything and anybody who tries to speak out against him is arrested. Remember 1984 folks and also remember what I mentioned about the Online Harms Act because Keir the traitor Starmer is heading towards it. He is heading towards it at blinding speed. He is heading towards it with the utmost of conviction. Like he's not going half-hearted on this one. He wants to do everything he can. Everything to destroy our civil liberties and our rights. He wants to make it so he can import the third world into this country and turn our country into the same third world shitholes that the illegal immigrants that are coming over here have come from. So it stands to reason why Keir the Traitor Starmer has got his media to go hush hush on this shit. You don't honestly think that this man is going to actually respect the wishes of the British people, do you? He'd rather piss on our graves, quite frankly.
which is why I made a point in the last video that even the king and veterans are going to show up this traitor, as they quite rightly should. That man is not even fit to lick my shoes, and that's saying something. He wouldn't even be fit to be seen looking at our army, let alone actually placing a wreath at a monument to our war dead. He is scum of the highest order. He is a man with no integrity, and he's a man with no principles, other than look after number one. And the number one for him is Kier, the traitor, Starmer. If he was given half a chance, I bet that man would run over his own grandmother for a little bit of political point scoring. I'm willing to bet that. Obviously it's speculation, but I'm willing to bet he would do it, and it's not exactly unfounded speculation either, considering we've already seen what his stance is on COVID. How he, how he and Boris Johnson and all the other Muppets told us we're not allowed to celebrate Christmas because of COVID, but he's going out partying while, her, while the Queen's fucking husband is six feet under. Hell, he's even come out of his way to say things are going to get worse before they get a lot better. No shit, Sherlock. We've been saying this the last two or three fucking years. We've been saying it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets better. How is it that a man can be so slow to read the room that he needs three years to actually say what the British public have been saying over the last, like, three to five years? How is that? It does beg the question, doesn't it? Is it astronomical incompetence? Or is it complicit negligence? Is he just that much of a blundering, blundering idiot? Or is he doing this deliberately to make himself look like he's stupid? when we already know he is stupid. I mean, no matter what people think of me, or me about to go through the windscreen. Anyway, no matter what people think of me, or Tommy Robinson, this man is dangerous. Thank you. I mean, it's undoubtable in my mind at this point. Kier the Traitor Starmer is probably the most dangerous man we have in the United Kingdom right now. But if it weren't for one of Keir the Traitor Starmer's biggest friends, Tony Blair, rescinding the traitor law, we'd already have this man locked up by now. But we have seen time and time again, they're trying to bring in the Online Harms Act. They're trying to bring in laws, like hate crime laws in Scotland. We have old Brenda getting arrested because she said something by accident on Facebook or Twitter. We've got Tom getting arrested. Obviously, I'm making these names up, but I'm putting, it, I'm putting the point across more than anything. But we have all sorts of people from all walks of life who have never committed a crime in their life before, who are getting charged based off of what they say on the internet. And while I do accept that one of these, you could argue, is somewhat justified, since it is calling for, basically blowing up the Bell End churches, and they're not Christian churches, let me tell you, you could technically argue a point that it's inciting terrorism or inciting violence. I can accept that, but here's the problem. We have people on the far left who are doing the exact same thing, and we have not heard one story about them being arrested. Why is that? Why is it we never hear about the people who have been attacking the police who are of the religion of peace which as I've said before there's now been two attacks on the Manchester Airport police the first two fuckers have been released without charge yet if we grit our teeth to the police we get arrested and we face custodial sentences which is something of course the mainstream media are very reluctant to tell you about but they tried to bring in hate crime laws in Scotland. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to bring it in here in the United Kingdom in general. And as much as I want to get behind the petition to have Keir the Traitor Starmer removed from power, let's be honest, do you really think he's going to listen to that shit? Could you imagine, though, if it was actually a paper-based thingy, a paper-based petition, and there was... 220, 230, 240, 250,000 signatures. 
I think he would have to take that a lot more seriously than an online petition because I suspect you wouldn't be able to see all the signatures. You'd just see the number. But at the end of the day, Keir the Traitor Starmer is going to do whatever the fuck Keir the Traitor Starmer wants. He doesn't give a shit about whether or not we dislike him. He doesn't give a shit whether he thinks what he's doing is unlawful. He doesn't give a shit if he's going to single-handedly destroy the country. He only cares about the globalist agenda and what his WEF masters tell him what to do. And once again, I'll say it here. I don't think we've got 12 months now. I think we've got six months at most now. Because I think after six months, this country's cooked. It's going to be like, stick it in the oven, 200 degrees, six months, there we go, Britain's cooked. That's honestly what I think right now. Because he's going to turn this country upside down to make sure he gets what he wants. Why else do you think he's allowed the move freedom of movement from the EU again? The reason is simple. He wants to make it so we rejoin the EU and overturn the biggest democratic vote in history. That would basically mean sticking a middle finger up to 17.4 million people. It means the man who gets in on the lowest majority in UK history now has overturned the biggest vote in democratic history. Why do you think Tommy Robinson, though, is going out of his way to make the documentary? And I know what people are going to say. Hell, I've even had some NPC accuse me of being one. A grifter. Why is it people think Tommy Robinson is a grifter? That he's basically a con man, an art, a con artist, if you will, to swindle people's money. I want to know. I'm morbidly curious. Last time I checked, the media and the judicial system spun a case regarding Jamal. They spun a case revolving a Syrian refugee who came over to this country, treated people like shit, and yet he was allowed to get away with it. And when the children went into that trial and protested against Jamal, the judge, the highest contempt of, well, sorry, not contempt of court, the highest judge in the land, as far as this case is concerned, he said the kids were lying. But Jamal wasn't. When Tommy has put many images out, many bits of evidence out, that it turns out that Jamal was a compulsive liar. But he was telling the truth. While the many kids who protested against Jamal, they were all lying, including someone going into law. When you put every piece of the puzzle together, it makes sense why Keir the Traitor Starmer is trying to get rid of freedom of speech. He doesn't want the truth getting out there because the truth would make him look bad. The truth would make the media look bad. And they are effectively an arm of the establishment, just like the two-tier stormtroopers, sorry, police. Or again, maybe I was right first time. But how the police are two-tier, and they don't want the British public to know that. Hell, he even flat out denied it in one of his speeches. Oh, we don't need to worry about two-tier policing. No, we can blatantly see the two-tier policing. You are not pulling the wool over our eyes, Keir the traitor Starmer. You need to stop lying to us, Keir. You need to stop telling us that there is no two-tier policing. I can assure you, there's two-tier policing. I've seen it firsthand. And a lot of the British public have seen it firsthand. They don't just need to take my word for it anymore. They can see the footage for themselves. They can see how ordinary patriots and concerned parents are treated, while Islam is allowed to commit violent crime against police and get off scot-free. And with this child rapist being given no jail time because jail is full, but then they have room for all these far-right thugs and football hooligans and blah, blah, blah. We definitely have a two-tier judiciary. So don't lie to me, Keir Traitor Starmer. 
and say to us, there is no such thing as two-tier policing. Because this is effectively your arm, your extension of your power that you are using, which is all you're in this for, Kier. Power and money. You are here basically to stitch the British people up and do what the WEF tells you to do. You are trying to silence our voices. You are trying to stop all political opposition from being able to have a platform for which to speak their opinions, which is the unbridled definition of fascism. You, Keir the Traitor Starmer, are a fascist and nothing more. Oh, actually, no, that's wrong. You're also a dictator. Oh, sorry, dictator. But then we already knew that. We can see it through how you're policing this. Oh, and then when the going gets tough, you want to fuck off to a holiday. Leave the country to burn. And then impose draconian laws that make it so that you give police the power to disband protests that you don't agree with. This does not galvanise the people to support you, Kier the Traitor Starmer. It basically readies up a powder keg of violent revolution. And you know what the people will say in the future if a violent revolution breaks out? They will see it as your fault, Kier the Traitor Starmer. They will see it as your fault that you continually... Think of like a soda can. Think of it like a can of cut... Coke or Pepsi. My mum prefers Coke, I think. Anyway, think of it like Coke or Pepsi, and you're just constantly shaking the can. Eventually, when you open that lid, it's all going to boil over. It's all going to go to shit. That's the way I look at it. It'll all go to shit, and when it happens, Kier the traitor Starmer will try to justify it, and then try to justify bringing in the army. But at the end of the day, he's already sealed his own fate. He's effectively made it so Keir the Traitor Starmer is going to be blamed for a potential violent revolution breaking out. And let me be absolutely clear, I don't want a violent revolution. I don't condone it, I don't advocate for it, I don't want it, and I'll condemn looting, violence against police, just violence in general. But I will completely understand why the people would go down that path. Because they're fed up of not being listened to. They're fed up of being screwed over by a dictator. Kim jong Kier, the traitor Stalin Starmer. That's what they're going to see you as, Kier. They're going to see you as the biggest dictator and the biggest traitor in history. And there's nothing you can do about it. And I will never stop calling you in. Because it's what you deserve. You deserve the absolute contempt you're getting, 100%. And as I said at the beginning of the video, when freedom of speech dies, so does democracy. And while people will say, but we don't live in a democracy at the moment, that may be true, but it doesn't change the fact there are still strands of democracy that exist. There are still ways to vote in certain people. So there is some sense of democracy even if it's not as perfect as it should be. But Keir the Traitor Starmer is hell-bent and will go hell and high water to try and suppress freedom of speech because he doesn't want his views challenged. Because if he gets challenged, he knows it's a political debate he's going to lose.